All right, folks, welcome to this exciting video where he once again joined me in an abandoned historical wonder in the middle of the Scottish countryside. And today I'm joined by the channel DJ who's up there. And today we've come to St Cyrus. This is the old little graveyard kind of caretaker's hut, which is at the corner of the graveyard. And I thought I would do the intro in here because it's out of the wind and it's nice and peaceful. And just look at the character of this old building. So cool. You can imagine the old fire crackling there on the cold winter days. Look at the way these stone slabs are attached as well. The hook in over the beams with those wooden bits. The wooden pegs. That's the way a lot of roofs would have been made back years ago. So it's quite interesting to see. Anyway folks, today we're basically just exploring loads of random history. And yeah, we're starting here at the St Cyrus Graveyard. A few weeks ago, Solo Bro was here on his video. Shout out Solo Bro. Cool adventures, man. But in his video, he was speaking about the bullet hole which remains in the wall along here. So before I leave this graveyard, we'll take a look. Look at this, folks. This is actually the bullet hole where the boy shot himself, George Beatty, poet of St Cyrus, who died by pistol at this point on Monday 29th of September 1823. Wow, and the mark's still on the stone where the bullet struck it. He must have been sitting here. But yeah, shout out to Solo Bro for pointing this interesting bit of history out a couple of weeks ago in his video. And it, yeah. This is the grave that he's buried in. Look at the metal work on that, that's so interesting. 1823 folks though, imagine that, that's when it was like a musket ball. That's how it's left that sort of indentation in the wall. Apparently it, he did it, shot himself next to his sister's grave or something. The woman that he was in love with, her, her, she came in about money and then wow. left him. She left him for bigger and better things, folks. And then that's what he did. And there's the history of it. It's been scored. Maybe somebody knows like the true history. Maybe this was incorrect or something. Or maybe that was I don't know why they would have scored that out. It's not the sort of thing a vandal would do, but Yeah. Anyway folks, let's move on with this St. Cyrus adventure. Look at this folks, this is one of the many abandoned house houses that litters the coast here near St. Cyrus. Like this has been like the little shed. Oh, folks, check this out. Oi! Well here watch it, look asbestos roof here folks. It's only if you're breaking it it's more dangerous and stuff. But yeah, it's always interesting. This all have its own little historical story. Maybe some of the old fish folk and that stayed in these houses and made their living fishing. I'll see if the house is open. That would have been where they kept their little car. And then this would have been where they stayed. The wind is so strong today, folks. Yeah, it's locked. Yeah, it's locked, folks. We'll see, there's more. There's another couple of these houses further down. Like somebody's been trying to bust this door right in. <laughs> Give us the end. It's crazy that history like that is just abandoned down here on the coast, folks. Furniture. <laughs> it's hard to really see. Yeah, we can't really see in there, folks, too too well. I think it's been whitewashed at one time. The weather's just taken its effect. And then I'm not sure if they had a car in this other shed or what. Is it like two different sections? Yeah. It's maybe been a little house for sorting out fish or something if they're fish folk. And then they maybe had it in here till it got collected. 
Anyway folks, let's continue on. There's another couple of cool houses down here. Look at this folks, this is the next little house. It's had work done to it though. It looks like a brand new roof. So I'm not sure. Somebody, I'm sure if, like a few years ago, people bought these houses for like a pound each or something like that. Look, it has been locked up. Oh, the door isn't actually locked. Let's peek in here, folks. Oh, aye. Oh, look at this. Here we go, folks. Look, it's got a chair and stuff in it. To the owner, we come with the greatest respects, folks. We're just literally documenting history like this, and then we'll be on our way. It's so interesting to see old historical buildings. Let's look at the chair. Just imagine the buddy sitting on that chair at one time, maybe looking out the window, waiting on the next catch coming in off the boat. I'll get a picture of this though, because fires like this could be demolished. Like, this is how it must have looked back in the day. So it is cool to see somebody's obviously been doing work to this place and keeping it in good condition. Look, that's the old doors and stuff lined in there. But yeah, shout out to you if you've bought this place and you're doing it up. It's good to see that it's getting taken care of now and it when I end up as a pile of rubble. It was cool just to go in and see that like little fireplace in the chair though. Super cool folks. Anyway, let's see, there's, a, there's another house down here now. Another bit of Scottish history abandoned. Look at this folks, this is St Silas Beach out here, this beautiful scene behind us. It's just an incredible winter scene out here. And yeah, we've made it as far along as this next little house. It appears to here like Harris fence and all the way around there. Look at this folks, this next house here is boarded up and fenced off. Well, it's not boarded up, I mean it's fenced off, but this is hilarious, look. CCTV in operation, as if anybody's going to be trying to like go in there and steal anything. <laughs> so obvious there's no CCTV in operation when there's no even electricity in here. Yeah, you used to be able to go up the stairs in that one. Yeah, super cool old building though, folks. No, there was an outhouse years ago. There was a little outhouse at the other side of the road. But yeah, there must have been a shed at this end at one time. Yeah, oh, it's definitely dangerous. A lot of this roof has fallen off. See, I wonder if slates or something's maybe been taken off there. Yeah, and there used to be another little shite house at that side, which is all gone now. Even these poles here, that's part of the fishing history. I'm sure they used to put their nets and support it with the poles to dry their nets. And then when they were hanging, they would sew them and stitch them and repair them ready for the next fishing outing. But yeah, somebody here is obviously a bit worried. See, asbestos, it says, and that's what I was saying. That's That'll be the real reason they've like fenced it off. Yeah, a little shed. Yeah, boat or whatever. Yeah, maybe that's where they had their boat, right enough. And then they would have retired into there for a cap, for a sleep before they went out on their next fishing journey. Right folks, we've now made our way along the beach and just look at this majestic scene behind us. It's crazy. We've come as far down the beach as we can, so we're going to go up here to the cliff top path and we're just basically go going where there's not a path right now. We're just going full sand up the side of this hill and it is super steep. The sand is actually frozen. See the sand away up here? This is crazy, folks. Real adventures, like I say. It's insane. Check the view out over there. Wow. We're nearly up. 
<laughs> Here, this is the steak bat. <laughs> Channel DJ is getting the bad vertigo. Here you go, folks. We've just climbed literally up there, and it's a steep, steep hill. And then look down this way. That's those houses and stuff we were at. Look at this old water thing down here, folks. It's like an old stone tank. And then look, it must be something to do with this person's house. They've got their solar panels and that on the wall. It's almost like an underground secret little like underground building right there. Must be like an underground kind of garage or something. It's quite an interesting little structure. Cause it look it just goes into the ground right there and then the house is kind of above it. Weird. Look at this folks, I've come further down the cliff top path and there's this ancient stone pillar which might have been here since back in the days of like there's an old castle ruin out on the rock there which is very precarious. Look at this folks, there's this little stone bridge here on the path and it's so cool. Look at that, that's got a character on its own right there. That was maybe a little track they would have gone on their horse and carts back in the day. Coastal erosion unfortunately has damaged this path severely and you enter this path at your own risk. There is council warning signs at the end saying you can enter at your own risk. So yeah there's one there. Anyway, we're going to continue on. I just thought this little bridge and that is such a cool thing to look at. Check it out, folks. Yeah, that probably dates back to like 1700s at least. Maybe even older. But then who knows, folks? It's more history documented on the channel once again. It's crazy because often you do not know what you're going to see. Just like on this walk, we're still not even sure at all the historical wonders we're about to witness. And it'd be cool to get a closer look at this castle around here if we can. Look at this folks, there's that little last remains of that castle just sits on that rock precariously there. It looks super dangerous to walk down that bit to it, so... From here I can't tell how wide the bit of land is, but it doesn't look very wide. Look at this view. The wind's super strong here, folks, so I'll update you once we get further along here. I just thought I would show you this amazing castle. Just imagine the history with a small site like that. It shows you the severe coastal erosion over the years. This, folks, this is the top of that bit where the castle is. Super, super dangerous, like, because the wind today is unreal. Oh look, there's a proper little fishing jetty in hand in there. Looks like there could be caves, little caves. Yeah, that's a whole little spot down there, right? That must be their own private little harbour. And check this out, it's so dangerous, folks, because of the wind, but also this is like a cliff. And it's so bad for, like, erosion right now. I'm not really wanting to risk it today. I would get down to that middle bit okay, but it's just, it's no worth it, folks. There's proper cliffs just to each side of this bit of land, and it's insane. The wind's so strong. Look at this, folks. We've now come further around the coast here. We're just literally going around the coast. Look, there's a military bunker. Oh, no way. We should go and have a look at that. Check this out though folks, this is one of these winches which they would have wound the boats up out of the water away after they'd finished their day's fishing. Oh that is a massive chain there, that's so cool. Crazy folks, this is like some wild coastal adventure and we don't even know what we're going to find. There's something new around every corner. And that's the best type of explorers, it's just spontaneous. Before you know it, you find unknown harbours and cool little military bunkers and stuff just hidden in the wilderness. Look at this, folks. World War II lookout position here. 
heading on the hill. I was thinking I had seen this one before, but I haven't. This is totally brand new to me. And this is always like the coolest adventures. You don't even know what you're going to find. And I love exploring the World War II stuff. Each one of these little places has got its own little story of people that would have been posted here or looking out over this vast seascape behind us. And it's, yeah, it's quite a small little pillbox. Wow, here's a route over. The shadow's at a low angle today, so it's a bit unfortunate. But the sun never gets high in the sky in Scotland at this time of year. Look, there's like some old water tank here. And then here's the bunker. I wonder how you get into this one. Look at it, it's actually a road route underneath, pretty much. Wow, what all the war to history. And look, it's an amazing condition inside. Because of this bunker's location, it's not near any roads. So the normal sort of folk that would be out vandalising stuff like this just aren't around. Which means we can explore it, folks, and document the history. I'm being super careful here, though. Here, watch it, because it could be a straight drop there. Some of these bunkers had stairs down into them. Like the one at, the one at Glen Shea. Check this out, folks. Real history once again. I can't even believe it. I've never, ever seen this before on a YouTube video, and it's so cool to document new things every week. Multiple times a week, folks. And look at this original door frame. Wow, check the amazing condition of this. Wow. This is, it looks like it was built just a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> See, this internal wall wasn't only for strength, it was to prevent blasts. If a blast had come in the door, this would have broken the force and it would have displaced the energy throughout the bunker equally. Look at this detail here, folks, how you can, you can tell that the wood has been laid in this shape and then the cement's been poured against it. And then when they take the wood away, you can see the grain. So you can imagine this structure built out of wood here, kind of originally, until they made it and then yeah, it's an impressive bit of wartime engineering, defending the country. Look, it's got those holes leading out there. wonder what they were. Look at that, folks. Holes lead right out. Well, it's maybe had metal in there for connecting camo net over the top. It's strange acoustics in here, folks. Look out the windows, though. They would be looking out over the coast. had an incredible view. Then they would have ready with the head. Should have seen the chief of India there. They would have ready with the head further up coast folks. Or wherever. They would have had contacts probably with the government. If they spotted like a U-boat surfacing or that, they would they would get ahead of the navy or whatever. Look at this, folks. We've just noticed some more cool details with this. Like, you can see the sloppiness when they were building the wooden frame, the different, like, ways it's been in. But then think also the weight of the cement and be pushing on the wood. You can even see where the screw heads have been, the nail heads, I mean. But look at this detail. They've had a door, a door-like frame in here, potentially, at one time. Maybe to stop the cold drafts. But also they've had a door here, so yeah, interesting World War II history, folks, and it is unreal. I'm guessing these drains here must have been original to you can see the original cement floor height there. All this other soily sediment has just washed in. Wow. I'm always like mind blown when I keep coming and finding more history like this, just hidden in the countryside. 
If we hadn't come on such a mad adventure today, God, we would never have found this. And there's always so much more out there still to be found. It's incredible. So there we go, folks. Another bit of ancient, well, not ancient history, but World War Two history, documented on YouTube for the world to see. And yeah, because of this one's remote location, it's done it a lot of favours. I can actually see cracks starting to appear here in the cement. So I'm not sure, I think the whole land here is just constantly subsiding and eroding. Yeah, that's how these places won't be around forever, so documenting them is such a cool thing to do. And like this one is literally really dangerous to get in as well if you if you ever visit it, just be careful. Because it's super slippy back here. I think there's been holes here for them attaching like camo net over the top. So when the planes and that came over it would have been hidden. But it is on the smaller side of a lot of the bunkers around the coast and Angus and that. This is actually Concardenshire we're in just now. Just north of St. Silas, a bit on the coast, folks. Yeah. What a cool, cool place. But yeah, we're going to continue on around the coast now a bit, because I think there's a few more ruins and stuff, and more history to be found, folks, so on with this adventure. Yeah, well, folks, we're making our way around the edge of this. Epic piece of British World War II history out here defending the wild east coast of Scotland. There wasn't a bit of land in in Britain that they weren't defending. They were all over, just looking for attack or looking for U-boats, German ships or just anything like that. They were always ready. And the little bunkers and stuff like that is the final bits of evidence left scattered on the land from a crazy time. Look at this folks, this is the last remains of a little house which at one time has been on the edge of the coast here. Look at that. It's crazy how buildings like this can just eventually disappear into the sea. And it makes you think, like, what other buildings may have been around here as well, which are just gone now. It is super windy, so that's how I'm staying at this side of the wall right now, but... Yeah, look, there's through the window, folks. There's no many folk with the North Sea in the living room, but this house has got it for sure. This house has got one of the best views of the North Sea out of all the real estate around here. Yeah, un unobstructed views of the North Sea. Just think one day that front wall must have just gone out. But then it looks like this must have been in the front of the house here. The wall must have led on along there. This, folks, there's some goats and some sheep here. We're going to see what this is on the hill here, made of stones. Though, let's just check these goats out, they're so cool. And then at this side, the water's totally frozen over with the winter ice. We're not even sure what this is, but I'm thinking it must be a water tank. I don't think it's a military installation. Yeah, folks, I can see, I'm, I'm guessing this is just a water tank or something for these houses. Because all the military stuff around here is made of cement. Yeah, we don't like climbing about Emery's private property or that. They'll be wondering what we're doing looking at their water tank if we did go up there, so... 
The ground here is that rich red clay colour. That's incredible. We're now continuing on up the coast because we've seen another historical military position, folks. It looks like a bunker or a pillbox of some sort, so we're going for a look. It's so cool to keep on recording these new locations all the time. Yeah, I'm just keeping it rolling on this adventure, folks. You're on the adventure with us. I'm not making it like separate videos or that. It's just one crazy adventure here on the East Coast with so much to see. Abandoned history from different times and different eras in Scottish history. Yeah, super cool. Even this old bridge here. Sometimes when the military was building the pillbox and stuff on the coast to defend it, they would have built bridges like this as well for accessing them. Wow. There's a couple of surfers out here today, folks. Oh, aye. Comes through the gap. Look how long our shadows are on a day like this, folks. We're just about to the other end of the bridge. No way. These boys are proper surfing on these waves. Check out this old bridge, though. It's so cool with old iron railings. They're in surprisingly good condition for the elements here, which we're in on a daily basis. This is similar to the area at Inverbervy where the pillbox is, but this is actually between St. Cyrus and John's Haven. Look at this folks, it's another one of these World War II pillbox bunkers, but unfortunately this time this one's flooded. So we're not going to be able to see. Look at this, wow. It's quite similar to that first one that we saw, but this one overlooks like a larger piece of ground. But it was definitely worth coming to look. I'm peep the camera in there, folks. Look at that. Go check the water out, though. It's like six inch deep or better. I didn't need the wellies on there. If I'd been wearing the wellies, <laughs> I could have been right in there, folks. And I normally do put the wellies on. Oi, oi. Channel DJ in there, folks. What a cool spot. And then look at the land that it overlooks here. It's amazing. This one they could also look up there. That's if the Germans landed on a bit of land like this. Their landing craft and that would be coming along. We would have had machine guns positioned up here on the hill. Clearing the beaches. This would have been our main defensive strategic position here at this cove. On the hill. It's just such a shame that it's flooded today. See, originally they often had a shape like that to deflect the bullets. But most of the ones we've seen today are smooth, so I'm not sure if that is original or what, but I have seen that on other bunkers. See, there is some remaining bits of history here, folks, with the bit of the door frame like we saw in the previous bunker. Yeah, you can see the mark where the door frame has been. But this bunker's just in the middle of a field now, unfortunately, so it's like getting damaged by the animals and whatever else. It's getting lost to nature and time, folks. Like I say about a lot of the locations we go to. And on the hill here, on this wintry day, it's super windy and cold, so... I do apologise if there's wind noise in the audio, folks. See, originally, folks, it may have had cam on it and but quite often they put earth and grass and stuff on the top of these so that it was camouflaged from the sky. And you can see the last remains of that. Pretty crazy. Cool bit of World War II history once again, folks. Wow. 
what a view out here as well. So cool to keep visiting these places. And often, like, the locations that had the well made defensive, defensive structures in were, like, the most precarious and wild bits of land, but every bit of land had to be defended, so you get relics of history way out here and places like this. It's so cool. Anyway, folks, on with this adventure. DJ's just saying here, folks, how this bit of land here has been built up, probably for when they're accessing this bunker, and also when they built this bunker, you can see how there's some big stones left around where there must have been like a road or a track down here. But I think the sea does come over here now and again, and a road through certain bits like this. See, it's unusual here how it's like a ditch all the way around. So they've maybe made it harder here for the Germans to attack. So they've, they've built this as part of a defensive bit as well. That's what I believe that is, folks. This is a defensive ditch right here. See this folks, you can see the way they've dug the land out here to slow the troops when they're running on the land and up towards this bunker. When their heads popped up here, the bunker would open fire. It's like the start in Saving Private Ryan when they're on, on the beaches in France. Of course, none of us have seen that No, but it could have. Like that, all this stuff was built just in case. Yeah. And each battle which could have taken place would have been like the start of Saving Private Ryan. They're trying to get some water to the land. And these little bunkers would have just been open and fire like bam. Look at this majestic coastal path we're on right now, folks. It's like the stuff out of a Scottish postcard. Wow. The red sandstone and the sunshine on it is just incredible. The way these rocks are all eroded and stuff is amazing. It's like walking about in another world. Look, somebody's scored in here. 1956 or something does that say, folks? 1956, somebody scored that in. Shout out to you if you're watching this video. You must have been a rogue back in the day, scoring in their name at the coast. All this is just getting heavily eroded away. Look at this now, folks. We've now come back down the coast a bit from that bunker, and we've gone up. There's a sliver of land here, like a... It's like a gorge. <laughs> Must have been to stop beasties eating them when they were wee, eh? But yeah, we're going up this gorge. There's a den of Fenella, it's called. Seemingly some old historical den in the land. And there's an old train track goes over the top of it and stuff. And it's up this path, folks. So yeah, that's the next stop on this amazing adventure. Hey, folks. We've just made it around here, this edge of land, and we've had to come to the middle of the river to cross, and we've just built this. <laughs> this is our stepping stone to get over, and I thought I'd better crack the camera out and record this. <laughs> oh! I made it! I made it, but my foot went right in, look. Get what? Throw some stones over here to land on. This is it, folks. This is how we we pathfind. We pathfind our way through, folks. Any environment, every environment we go to trains us for the next one. Because we're constantly exploring. This is all part of the fun, folks. I do apologise for the wind at this point, but go for it. Just one foot on there, and then just. My stone's solid mate, get on there with your right foot and then just land on that stone but throw yourself up. Perfect. 
that's how we do it folks full send every weekend it's not even the weekend today is it this is crazy folks look at this rare soft sandstone that this cliff's made of as well it's like scotland's version of Ayers rock or something we're dealing with look at this folks we've rounded the corner here at the bottom of this gorge and now we're greeted with the start of the forest and this is where there's a super cool it's where the railway line went over and there's a massive railway bridge here which is really really high off the ground and i've been wanting to come here for a video for years so there's no time like the present folks this bridge here is located at den of Fenella. me and the channel djs just come some crazy route here just through this wilderness but that's what the adventure is all about folks I need to record this folks, I'm going up this hill and I cannot get a grab. The ground is so muddy. I was just running on the spot there. This is intense. This there's massive big voids in the ground and stuff here folks, it's crazy. Crazy scenes. We're making our way along to the abandoned railway bridge, which is a feat of engineering. Even this old wall in front of us is a feat of engineering. It can hardly be seen now. Three branch snapping there, folks, against the DJ's face. That's what we're dealing with out here. Wild Scottish countryside conditions. Everything's out to get you. Look at this, folks. We often find the craziest route through these places when we visit them, like because our approach was from the coast, it's an unusual way of getting to Den of Fenella here. I'm pretty sure the Den of Fenella gets its name from an old lady, Fenella, who was getting chased because something kicked off. I'm not sure if it was the Highland Clearances or earlier in time, but when she was getting chased by the soldiers, she jumped over the waterfall at the Den up here, so then they named it the den of Fenella, and the whole area here is Fenella, I'm pretty sure. Look at this, folks. This is crazy. Look, there's the old bridge. It's a viaduct, folks. I was thinking it was a single span. Look how massive those towers are, the pillars. Wow. Here, this is a true feat of engineering. Look how high this cliff is. And see, if, see where the wee burn comes through in the summer when it's lower. We'll come back here because if you wear wellies or whatever, you can just go obviously barefoot or whatever, trainers, but you can go through there into that gorge and there's a massive waterfall. It's like, it's like a scene from a calendar picture. But anyway, let's take a look at this. We can get up on top of this railway bridge and have a look. I think, I don't know how far we could get down there though, to be honest with you. Again, this time of year. Well, we couldn't have come down, but I'm gonna have to walk to the end. The view down this gorge probably doesn't have come out properly on the camera, like the magnitude and the height. We're literally like two, 200 foot up here or something, and the feat of engineering to build that bridge is just phenomenal. It's an incredible structure. But like, see looking down there, eh? it's a crazy jungle-like scene. And there's little waterfalls and stuff running down all over. But there's an incredible waterfall beyond this bridge. Wow, the height of that, it's just mind-blowing. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out, folks. Wow, what a spot right here. British Railway engineering at its finest. And it's the first time I've come here to document this on my channel, so it's a special visit. This has been a cool adventure. We've visited so many things around the coast here at St. Cyrus and this exploring. This is the cherry on top of the cake right here. How cool is this? And it would be a cool bridge even if it was just at that height when you consider the height of that boom it's just amazing there's waterfalls at each side 
Look at this, somebody's been here 1974. ID and JM. Shout out if you watch this video, folks. Yeah, that must be when this bit of cement here was put in. That was probably the folk that did it. Look at this, this is like a little veranda area here at the edge of the brig. Just imagine the steam train coming over the top. It must have been a single line. Wow, the ivy's just taken over now. What a scene. Look, there's the waterfall over there. And that's the current main road up there. We'll have to walk further up in here, look over the den of Fenella. It looks like such a cool bit here to explore in the summer. Again, we could be down there at water level. Here, wake a bit. There's always so many adventures to be had, folks. In the summer, I definitely want to come up the river, though, and walk right up here and get right into the den of Fenella for sure and look at the waterfall. Because I think you can actually swim a bit in the water. But even if we just went up for a look, it would still be a cool adventure. I'm going to get a couple of photos of this, though, because it's so incredible. What a place, folks. I was just getting a few more images, looking over the side of there and getting some pictures of this bridge. Because it probably won't be standing forever anymore, either. I don't think it's maintained anymore, and the ivy's roots are digging in between the mortar and the joinings of the bricks. So it's pushing it apart and damaging it every year that passes. These paths are super precarious around here though, so if anybody visits this location, they really do have to be super careful. Look at this, this whole tree is sheared here. Wow. This is where the old trains would have come hurtling over after they had come over that massive viaduct at St. Cyrus and through the village. They would have come over this bridge. Look at this folks, what a crazy, crazy old bridge. You can get a proper view of the the waterfall and stuff. See these trees that's growing up here will be weakening the foundations of the bridge as well. You just have to think how high up we are right now. Is that the edge where the waterfall is? It's hard to see through the trees, but look. Wow. What a crazy, crazy adventure, folks. If you fell down there, you would be literally a goner for sure. I wouldn't advise probably people, you're not really meant to be coming over bridges like this, which are that old, but we're going to get this footage, so if it falls down tomorrow, you can see exactly how it looked. I'm also not, I'm not leaning on the edges or anything like that, and being super careful. Yeah, look, there's a way down there, we roll for Sahara. See the steps? Yeah. We could go for a look, see if we can get down there today. <laughs> <laughs> Look how steep it is down there though. <laughs> this is so cool folks. Just think at one time there would have been railway like tracks that had laid over here. It's amazing how long like this bridge has stood. Even the bridge over there which the main road is, it's probably about the same age. The two bridges were probably built around the same time. Wow. What you're saying is there a hole in the that, folks. I think there is a layer of earthy stuff here though and probably rabbits have been digging around and jamming things up. Wow. See, look at this last, uh, what would you call it, arch in the bridge. It, it's like over the land. Oh, that's what the other side's like as well, eh? But the pillar at the other side's so much higher. The two middle pillars are just incredibly high. These outer ones, not so much. It's crazy the way they just had to overcome a crazy bit of land like that. Look at this. Wow. 
people have been climbing around there, I would say. Let's go down and have a look underneath this arch. Document the bridge, folks. It's all about the adventure. I can't believe, like, the level of craftsmanship to build a bridge over here, like... They must have originally built the centre pillars and then... It must have all had wooden frames or something, or... Folks, the trees are just growing out here because it's so old and look at the way the roots are pushing the stone up. Oh aye. An old fence post, eh? it's a proper piece of cat. So you can ratchet the fence wire around. Somebody's been camping here. Wow, it is cool to see the bridge from all these different angles. Take it all in. Yeah, wow. It's just insane right there, folks. Look at that for an abandoned scene, folks. That's what we aim for on this channel. Ancient, abandoned wonders just hidden in the countryside. Sometimes when you get the sunlight shining through it like that, it looks so special. Check this out, folks. What an angle. That is crazy, folks. Like, the height of these centre pillars. The sun's coming right under that arch. But it's honestly a feat of engineering. I can't really express it as much on the camera. It's like so much work just to get a train over the top of here but it was probably their only option like it was this or they wouldn't have had a train line and i think i'm pretty sure the train that came over here was just a, a side like coastal line it wasn't the main east coast line but yeah obviously once these little side railways and stuff were closed places like this just got left to nature Ivy is one of the favourite things that seems to just grow up and take over a lot of old buildings. Once it gets a hud, it just gets right over it. Even the trees around places like this are just covered in ivy. But the noise of the river in the background down here makes it pretty cool. Places like this would be like a whole adventure on their own, but I'm just keeping this like one long movie. We've just explored so much in one area, and that's that lets the viewer see how much can be achieved if you just go on a walk sometimes. The things you see, it's just mind-blowing. Like things from a, the time gone by, which is just gone and forgotten. In the winter it's sometimes pretty cool coming to places like this too because you can see how it looks and you can get to bits of it that would normally be like blocked by vegetation and stuff. Maybe one day we'll have to go for a walk further up the coast and see if there's any more like military bunkers and pillboxes and anything else of history which has been abandoned because it's always so interesting. It's so cool. That ice out of the top of the wall <laughs> that shows you the, the shape of the hole it was sitting in. Eh? It also shows you the wintry conditions we're dealing with on these adventures, folks. Once you've been out for a certain amount of time, though, you didn't feel the cold, you just get used to the environment that you're in. Whoa, and this one's a super slippy, icy, abandoned bridge environment. <laughs> just think if this just gave way right now. Whoa. Like, we'd be gone, folks. Gone off the map. You'll never see this episode. Real adventures.
It took so long for the ice to fall, I had time to step forward and then <laughs> record over before it even hit the ground. Look at this, I wonder what this has been. Had somebody brave standing here trapping that in, <laughs> the whole thing could just go boom, down you'd go. You would think that they would trim like these trees and stuff, at the least, to keep this bit of history alive. I would say probably they'll just put a fence over it and in a few years can, we'll be breaking the law having a look at that. So that's how it's cool to record these places. There we go folks, look at that, you can see the waterfall a lot closer from here. That's the main road going over that bridge. And we're going to have a quick look down here, but we're keeping it super safe today, folks. Like, because the, the cliffs here are just into that jungle. It's like a cliff face into the jungle, folks. I don't know what to be flying through that jungle canopy like a squirrel. No way, watch it, because those stone steps might not be safe. I know, that's what I'm thinking. There's nothing underneath them. Yeah, there's nowhere else to go after it. What is this, folks? What, what are we seeing here? This is crazy. Like, this must have been a path at one time. Is there any way we could just... We hate to think if we can get back up or not. Didn't just go there and then down. Just watch it, because if that goes ah and behind, it'll go. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> Real adventures, folks. <laughs> I'm going to grab you if it goes. Full send. Just go watch. Oh, that's a spiky bush in front of you. Be careful of that. <laughs> Thing is, we need to come back up here, folks. Can we need to get back up, DJ? <laughs> right, we're doing it. <laughs> yeah. See that, folks? These old steps have led right around like a path which is just fully eroded into what it is today. Look, we're still right on the edge of this cliff. Oh, what a view, the bridge from here though, wow. This has made it worth it, folks, coming down here. The ground is frozen solid underfoot, to it. it's a crazy environment. Look at this, folks, the views like this, you just cannot believe until you see them. It actually looks like that middle arch is just extremely damaged. I'm being careful here because I'm just in the trainers and this is super icy here and literally there's like 200 foot drops all around. Here I would be careful there bud. If you had a hold of the rope you'd probably be safe enough. As long as that whole tree didn't they come fleeing. Look at this, folks. This tree. I can't get to it either, though, because I'm holding the camera, folks. <laughs> this tree would probably be solid enough to hold, like. Real adventures, folks. This may look really dangerous on the camera. It is, believe me. But like, we are doing this because we we know what we're doing. We're being super careful. Like we're on, we're exploring so much that we can trust within our experience. I wouldn't advise anybody comes down here. And also, I'm vlogging as well. Instead of having two hands on the rope, I'm just got one hand. I'm just, like, we're going to get the perfect view of this waterfall. I wouldn't go much further than that. No. Because the ground just looks like it drops off from there on. See that? There's been stone steps the whole way down there. Yeah. That's so cool. Carry on down there. Yeah. See, we could get down there in the summer. Aye. Look at that. Though. Yeah. The other way you can get to it, though, is walk right up the river, which is no bad either. 
Anyway folks, check this out. Look at that folks, we're literally in a Scottish jungle paradise here mm -hmm. at Den of Fenella. Even in the winter, places like this are lush and green. And look at that waterfall, it's just like almost a straight drop down the rock face. Just like if we slipped here folks, we'd be straight drop down this rock face. It is interesting to see how the old stones lead around the top of that. Yeah. The view of that bridge is incredible, like the height of that bridge. Just the wild landscape we're in folks. The adventures are always real on this channel. But it is cool to see that there would be a way down there in the summer if you had your wits about you. Anyway, let's head on up here. Because I'm climbing with a rope, I'll just update you once I get further up here. So look at this one more time, folks. Look at this amazing landscape that we're in. When they built the bridges over the top of these places, they literally did some insane work. We're definitely going to come back in the summer, or in better months, probably when the water's a bit lower. It could be good fun to walk up the river and then make our way up to the Den Fenella waterfall. But if we can't even walk up the burn, we'll just literally come up this way. Now we've got our next hurdle here, we need to get back up. This has been a crazy adventure, this film, folks. It's like BKR, the movie, the St. Cyrus movie, folks. There's a route there and you can grab a hurdle. Ooh, this is real deal, folks. I've said, I've said real adventures too many times. <laughs> but like, the adventure is just blowing my mind. A place like this, the landscape's so wild. It's like, it's got a crazy atmosphere to it. The way everything's so green, the waterfalls just drop down from so high up. It's like what you see in like Madagascar. Some of those crazy places. Yeah, look at this. Look at this folks, this is the top of the waterfall. This bridge looks so oh, old. Yeah. yeah. It would be difficult to get to it though. Yeah. You can see how it was one width originally. And then they've made it wider. Wow. Look at that folks, straight drop there onto the rocks. Check this little tunnel out. Oi! <laughs> Into the ghostly tunnel folks. Wow. Who would have known it two minutes ago we would be in the tunnel, eh? Just the adventure today just keeps on throwing more and more at us. See, I think the original bridge here had a tunnel through it with the stonework. Hold on folks, I'll get the torch. Look at this folks, the original bridge at this side had the stones and then once they've widened, widened the bridge they've used their cement but they've continued the tunnel going which is a pretty cool feature because it doesn't even go anywhere folks, it just goes to this side of the bridge and check it out Whoa, what a scene There we go folks, I just got some cool photographs of that. It's so interesting to see the architecture even on like an old bridge like this. Which is actually the main road right now. The current road north of St. Cyrus comes over here. Right folks, that's been a crazy adventure today and we've seen so much history. The sun's just about to set. But I'm going to end this video here. If you want to see what we're away to do next, we're away to follow the railway line back to St. Cyrus direction to see where it goes. So I'm sure if, if that's a cool adventure, folks, it'll be the next episode. So stay tuned. Goodbye for me. Goodbye for the channel, DJ. And we'll see you very soon in the next adventure, folks. Thanks for watching.